Warm greetings from the High Ten. It is Everyday Shenanigans on the Saturday, September 19th, 2020. Uh, I brought you guys a video yesterday about um, the death of Lorenzen Wright. Um, he was a former NBA star. Um, there was a documentary that was on 2020 last night called Mystery in Memphis, and it aired on ABC. And I want to give you an update to that um, documentary. Um, Lorenzo Wright played for the NBA 13 seasons. He was estimated at a worth of $55 million. He went missing in Memphis, or went missing, um, and was later found 10 days later in a wooded area in Memphis, Tennessee. This was in uh, July 28, 2010. He was 35 years of age when he passed away. He had just finalized his divorce from Shara Wright uh, a few weeks beforehand. Some of you may not know, but Shara pled guilty to facilitation to murder last year. And she also had a co-conspirator, Billy Ray Turner, a guy that uh, attended church with her and was known as a, um, a gardener and was believed to be a gardener for her and her husband at one time. It was mentioned in the documentary. Okay, um, in 2017, November 2017, a gun was found in a Mississippi lake, and that information was given to authorities by Shara's own cousin, Jimmy Martin. Now, Jimmy Martin was convicted of murdering his girlfriend, so he decided to give said information pertaining to his cousin Shara and a Billy Ray Turner that they conspired and murdered. Mr. Lorenzen Wright, and I'm assuming he did this to possibly lessen his time uh, for the murder of the young of the lady that he murdered. Um, I don't know how that panned out, but that was mentioned in the documentary. We have some key players in this storyline. One, the decedent, Lorenzen Wright. Shara, the woman he was married to and had six children with. Kelvin Cowens, a man who met Miss Shara. Uh authored a book with her um, called Mr. Tell Me Anything. Kelvin got involved with Shara. He ended up moving to Houston, Texas with she and her children, and they dated, and he dated her for three years. But the relationship did not work out because he felt like her only desire, or as he stated, the, the apex of her thinking was to only get money from uh, Lorenzen's estate. So that relationship went sour. Shara then moved on to California and that is where she was arrested many moons later. Um, Jimmy Martin tells the story that Shara masterminded this plot to have Lorenzen killed and also plotted to have him murdered in 2010 when Lorenzen was in uh Atlanta, Georgia, and she had went down there to visit, and she had Jimmy Martin and Billy Ray Turner, <laughs> this is so crazy, enter into an open window that she opened to execute the murder of Lorenzen, but when they got inside of the said home, they realized another man was sleeping in the said home, and Lorenzen was not there, which this is a really bizarre story, sounds crazy like a Lifetime movie, opening windows and letting in culprits to murder your ex-husband. It's just crazy as hell. Okay, but that plan failed to be executed because she could not do it herself. And obviously, the wrong guy was inside of the home, which was the homeowner. Okay, and uh, as you watch the documentary, you will understand that Lorenzen had moved to Atlanta and was staying with a friend at that said location where this plot was to take place in 2010, but did not. But several weeks later, it took place in Memphis, Tennessee. What I'm curious to know is how did the culprits get Lorenzen out to that wooded area, which is not too far from a home that he used to live in? I don't know if it was a childhood home or or a home he grew up in, but anyway, that's this. This was said in the um, documentary. Excuse me, that the wooded area where he was found was not too far from a home that he once lived in. My, I'm telling you, so much to divulge. I'm sorry. 
I'm just curious to how did they get him out there? What did they say to him? Obviously, he came to town, visited a friend, hung out with a friend. Everything was fine. His friend dropped him off, um, I believe, at Shara's home. But naturally, she played crazy like she didn't know where he was, hadn't seen him. Oh, he's off with some women, blah, blah, blah. What is the 411? What happened? How did they get him into the car? What rules did they use to get him into the car? Billy Ray and the cousin Jimmy Martin or whatever, because there is a 911 call where Mr. Lorenzen is calling 911. He's on the line with the dispatcher and he's saying, you know, oh, such and such cuss words. And then you hear gunshots. The baffling part of this story, besides that, wondering how he got to that location to be disposed of. When you see the crime scene photos, it is so disheartening and so vile to see the imprint of this man, who was a very big, tall man, laid out, and the film was black because he had melted, literally, into the grass. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It was so hot that July... And naturally, he was missing for 10 days. So Mr. Lorenzen Wright literally melted into the earth. And there was an imprint of his body, his figure, and his arms were stretched out. It is the most insane, horrific scene to know that man laid out there for 10 days, dead. No one could find him. No trace of a phone call from the police, the dispatch office. And he laid out there in the hot, baking sun, heat, humidity, the elements, everything you can think of. He laid out there. And the imprint tells the story. I mean, you have to see it because I can't explain it to you. So please watch 2020. Go on your own demand and pull up the 2020 episode that aired last night because this is a baffling story. Obviously, his mother probably does not feel like she has closure so I'm, I'm sure that's why they did this uh, interview with her and his friends because she doesn't feel like she has closure. Because it, although um, Shara was indicted last year um, in court, she never spoke to how it happened. You know, she didn't lay out a plan. She just gave her testimony to the judge that she was pleading guilty to facilitation. She got 30 years. She will be up for parole in 2026. And that's one of his friends said, what the hell is nine years? You know, that's nothing compared to what she did to him because this man no longer has a life. They've left behind children. And this is just a sick tale of what really happened out there in July of 2010. How did he get out there? What rules did they use? What was her motive for having him killed? Why didn't she even explain what she did to him? How it came about? Okay? She gave nothing. All she did was pled guilty, took a plea. And naturally she took a plea because her cousin Jimmy Martin came forward with the information about the gun that was found in a Mississippi lake 45 miles outside of Memphis. And so she had no choice but to go ahead and take a plea. But the sad part is, in that plea, she never gave the 411 to what happened to Mr. Lorenzen on that fateful day. How did it come to be that he ended up out there? She gave no statement. And even in court, the mother of Lorenzen gave her comments to the court, addressed Miss Shara, told her she thanked her for bringing her grandchildren, um, making the grandchildren with her son, the attorneys for Shara told her she didn't have a comment. I think she wanted to answer because she asked the judge if she could answer. But her attorney spoke for her and it felt like there was no need in her speaking because what could she say to make the situation better? And I agree. But I think his mother would have wanted to hear something from her considering in the beginning she never owned up to knowing of anything about his whereabouts, never admitting to killing him. Or conspiring with others. And then there's the issue of Jimmy Martin, the cousin. Some are saying that perhaps he played a pivotal role in the murder of Lorenzen. And he tried to bow his way out by saying, hey, I'll tell you where the gun is. But not actually revealing he was also the one 
who lured Mr. Lorenzen out to that wooded area to murder him. And perhaps he did conspire. Because my thing is, how does he know about the gun? How does he know about the gun? And how would Billy Ray have gotten him out there? What could Billy Ray have told him? How did they meet up? Do you see where I'm going with this? How did they meet up? What did they say to him? Who said what to him? See, that's what I'm so confused about. Is how did the parties get Lorenzen out to that wooded area? That's what makes me think that he did go to that house where Shara lived. The cousin was there, or the other guy was there, and perhaps they pulled a gun on him, put him in the car. I don't know, but something was foul, and it is now believed that there are three conspirators. Shara, Billy Ray Turner, the fellow church member, and is and also believed to be a lover as well, and this cousin, Jimmy Martin. Jimmy Martin gave up information about the said gun because he had been convicted of murdering his girlfriend. And... This is even more baffling. So one can wonder, too, did he just give up this information to try to get a lesser lesser charge or time for murdering his girlfriend? And then the flip side of that is you're still implicating yourself because you knew where the gun was. So why would I not believe that you also have killed Lorenzen Wright? See, you can weigh it both ways. He did it to lessen his time because he had information. But never came forward to tell anybody, hey, I know my cousin conspired to kill this man. But then he gets indicted for murder, convicted of murder of his girlfriend. Now all of a sudden he wants to bring information about a missing gun. The gun that is and has been linked to the killing of Lorenzen Wright. How about that? So why did she kill him? Was it for money? It has also been said she tried to get pregnant by him early on when she first met him. The mother is thinking she had her eye on him because she thought he would be famous, make a lot of money. They did have six children. So guess what? She met him. She had children with him, married. All of that. His father took her to court because he felt like she was not spending the money properly from the life insurance policy where she got $1 million after the death of Lorenzo Wright. <sighs> I don't know the fallout of that, but that's sad to have these people bickering back and forth going to court. They showed an itemized statement of all the money that she spent, the things that she bought, and I don't think she really had anything left in her bank account after all the money she went through, the $1 million. So it's obvious she didn't spend the money on the children. She was buying luxury items such as fancy cars, Mercedes, things like that. Did she marry him because she thought, she could have a well put life. Did she murder him because she wanted more money? Still angry because he allegedly had affairs. There's also an issue that um, in the beginning, she made it seem like he was into drugs and left with some men. But as a preacher said, those things they want to dispel because they don't want that tarnishing his reputation. And there was also no proof of a drug connection to the death of Lorenzen Wright, and the police gave that statement. So it all falls back to Shara, Billy Ray Turner, the gardener slash grass cutter, church member, and Jimmy Martin. Billy Ray Turner will go up for trial this fall if COVID allows the trial to proceed. Jimmy Martin, the cousin of Shara Wright, has not been indicted for conspiracy or facilitation or murder of Lorenzen Wright. I don't know if there will be evidence brought forward in the future, but as this, at this current moment, he has not been indicted on charges of murder for Lorenzen Wright. And as I state, Billy Ray Turner will be going to trial allegedly this fall. This is a baffling story. I'm glad I watched the documentary. I'm glad I got the notification for the documentary yesterday when I brought you all that video. I want you guys to check it out. Tell me what you think. Um, this is terrible. When you watch the 2020 uh, episode, you'll see how animated his mother is. And you can see her pain. And you can see that she's, it's still not sitting right with her because she doesn't have an answer. All she got was a half-baked plea deal given by the state to Shara. 
but she doesn't have the actual words coming out of that woman's mouth. Hey, I killed your son. This is why. When I watched the documentary a while ago, as I told you guys, I could see something in her I didn't like. I got a bad vibe about her. Her statement from the guy who is doing the documentary, he asked her one question. Do you know of his disappearance and did you kill Lorenzen Wright? Her answer was so vague and around the corner. Never did she say, no, I did not kill him. No, I did not. I do not know where he is. Her answer was, I am a mother. I am an author. I am a wife. I am a such and such of the Lord and all that. B.S. That's not what he asked you. He asked you, do you know of his disappearance? Do you know where he is? Did you kill Lorenzo Wright? See, an honest person, an innocent person would have said, I don't know where he is, and I did not kill him. That's the answer an innocent person would give. Not, I'm a mother, I'm an author, I'm a butcher, baker, candlestick maker. You understand what I'm saying? You answer the damn question. And ever since I watched that documentary, I knew something wasn't right with that girl. I knew she had something to do with that man's death. And she may not have pulled the trigger, but she orchestrated. She may not have even been there. But she orchestrated the death. And it was obvious. And the way she walked in and out of court, twisting, I said to myself, this heifer is a narcissist, a sociopath, and she's walking in and out of this court like she a queen, and she ain't. And she is nothing to look at. She is not a morning star. Now, she may have been attractive 20-so years ago, but let me tell you this. In her court appearances, she barely has any hair, and she did not look attractive she put on a lot of weight. She was not a pretty lady. And frankly, to be so evil to kill your children's father, your ex-husband, you're a dirty dog. Despite whatever happened in the relationship. As far as the Kelvin Cow, Cow, Cowan, excuse me, this guy took up with her who wrote the book. I didn't understand his mindset. To now, after the fact, say, oh, I've been dating this lady for three years. How have I been sleeping around with a killer? Yeah, you did. And you knew there was a chance she could have murdered her husband. But you went on and dated her anyway when you were writing the book. Mr. Tell Me Anything. And the book is about a basketball star who cheats and ends up dead. Oh, did y'all hear that? Do you see where I'm going with that? So, you meet this lady. Knowing her situation... Knowing that people have impl implicated her in the death of this man. And yet you write a book about a basketball player. Who's married. Who cheats on his wife. And ends up dead. And somewhere down the line you don't think this lady. Is not the cause of this man's death. And you're writing a fictional book. About. A basketball player. And then once you watch the news and you see that she's been arrested for murder, now you want to say, wow, who is this lady? Oh, I can't believe I dated a murderer for three years. Well, you already said her only motivation was about getting money from his estate. She was telling on herself then. You see, let me tell you all something. And we're all guilty of it. Dealing with people that don't mean us good. Dealing with foul people. Even knowing that they are foul. There comes a time. You have to know when to fold. Stop sugarcoating things. Cut these people off. This chick. Was bad news. And probably bad news from the beginning. It is easy to look through a glass. And say. It's half full. It's empty. It's a little bit to the top. Because you can see things different from the outside than when you're in the glass. And that's what happens to many people. When they're in the glass, they can't see anything. Because they're inside. But if they were to step outside, they might see what we outsiders see. Which is something sinister and foul and rank. You see, he immersed himself in the glass. Mr. Cowens. Because somehow this appeal she had with men... He got turned on and fell for the BS. But guess what? 
whatever you fell for was the same thing Lorenzen fell for, and you see what happened to him. Come on with it. I don't know why this man would want to talk to her. Date her. That's baffling to me as well. This whole story is baffling. As I state, how Mr. Lorenzen got out there to that field, that wooded area, to be murdered and left for dead. Sharon never coming forward with the truth. Naturally, she wouldn't because she conspired his death. The fact that her cousin knew, because nine times out of ten, he was the one who helped put him out there. And he only came forward because he killed his girlfriend and wanted to try to get a lesser charge, a lesser time. The Billy Ray guy, he's fallen for her, obviously. He doesn't tell anything. Nobody tells anything until somebody gets charged with murder, which is the cousin, Mr. Martin. And he tells what the gun was disposed of in a lake in Mississippi. It's a terrible, terrible story. But as you see, with all this twist and turns, made for TV movie damn near, this was real life, this is real life, someone is now deceased early, left with six children. So who is the winner? There were no winners. Because a man is dead. His family is still grieving his death. The ex-wife is now in prison. And six children no longer have a father. And another person, Mr. Turner, is going up for the charge of murder. And who's to say if Mr. Martin, the cousin, will also go up for murder? So you see, in the end, there were no winners. No winners at all. And what was the point to murdering this man? What was the reason for Lorenzo Wright's death? Tragic tale. A very tragic tale. Prayers to his mother and their family. I'm hoping that one day she will find closure with this situation. I don't know, maybe one day she'll just reach out to Sharon and talk to her directly and just ask her, why did you kill my son? I need to know so I can sleep at night. And I think she owes his mother that. And she also owes her children that. And she also owes herself that. Thanks for listening on this early Saturday morning. Like, share, subscribe, drop your comments, drop your comments below. Tell me what you think about this story of Lorenzo Wright. Um, please check out the episode, uh, Mystery in Memphis. It's running on ABC 2020. It's a very good documentary. I hope you all enjoy it. Tell me what you think. And this is Everyday Shenanigans. You all mask up. Have a blessed and safe weekend. And I'll be back later with another video. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.